If you've been thinking about starting a blog, now's the time because headless mode is now available inside of Hashnode. For me, Hashnode has always had one of the best editing experiences, and now you can use that alongside your favorite tech stack and deploy anywhere you want. So like any good developer, I've rebuilt my personal blog at least five different times, but if I were to start over again today, this is exactly what I would use. So let's have a look at Hashnode's new headless mode. That's a tongue twister. And at the end, I'll show you a few killer features you may not have even known existed. Now, a little bit of context on what Hashnode is before we get started. Hashnode is my go-to recommendation for developers looking to start a blog. So you can see on the dashboard here, I have a list of content that other people have created, and I could go in and write blog posts myself. Now for me, I think this is the easiest way for people to get started writing a blog because Hashnode takes care of the editing experience and the hosting. But one limitation of that is what if you wanted to have a great editing experience, but also build your own blog with the tools that you know and love or tools that you want to learn? Well, that's where this new headless mode comes in. So Hashnode now has a new set of APIs that you can query with GraphQL to bring your content into whatever application that you're building with whatever technologies that you want to. So they have kind of two different ways to approach this. You can consume these GraphQL APIs all by yourself and write all the code yourself, or, and this is what we're gonna look at, you can start with their Next.js starter kit. Now the Next.js starter kit has all the code already written to consume the blog post, to create a list of blog posts on the homepage, to have the details page to show cover images and SEO metadata and all the things that you would need for a fully functional blog they take care of for you with the starter kit. Having worked at a few startups myself, I can tell you that managing blog content can be a real hassle if you don't find tools that work really well. Because of that, the Hashnode APIs and the starter kit can not only be beneficial for individual developers, but also teams and companies that want to focus more on building their products than having to maintain a blog. So let's see how to get started and set this up. So if we look in the instructions, basically it's saying that we can fork an existing repo to get started and then we can deploy that wherever we want. And in this example, we're gonna deploy that to Vercel. Now, after you have this project, all the code is yours. So if you wanna customize it using Tailwind CSS or deploy it somewhere else other than Vercel, you can do whatever you want because it's your code. Now, I'm particularly interested in Next.js because we're gonna dive a little bit into the code to show you how it's working and talk a little bit about how revalidation works with Next.js, which can make sure that your users have the latest content as you publish new articles. So let's go ahead and get started. If you click the Get Started button here, it takes you to this repository. So this is the starter kit. And one thing to know is that there are different packages inside of here. So if we go inside of packages and go into the blog starter kit themes, there are three different versions that you might want to try out enterprise, hash node, and personal. And we can, we'll take a look at at least two of these as we go through this, but just know you can choose whichever one you want. Really quickly, let's take a look at the three blog options that we have. The first is the personal one, which is a lot more minimal. So we have a list of blog posts here. We can click on these, go into the details page and scroll through. You can tell this is fairly minimal and a great place to start for individual developers looking to build their blogs. Next, we have the hash node theme, which is basically just a replica of what hash node homepage looks like. So you see the colors are similar, the icons are laid out similar. You have the cover images showing and you can go in and see more details for these as well. This is almost exactly a replica of the existing Hashnode dashboard. So if you wanna keep that same look and feel, this is definitely the way to go. Lastly, we have the enterprise theme, which is targeted more at companies. So you can see we have a search feature here. We also have our newsletter built in. And then if you scroll down, you can see new post and then a load more post button. So it has pagination or infinite scrolling all built in. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage and I'm gonna start by forking this repository. If you're new to forking, basically what this means is I'm gonna make a copy of that repository into my own account and that project I actually own as myself. So we'll take the defaults here and we'll go ahead and create the fork. Now the next thing is we wanna go ahead and deploy this to Vercel. So you can open up Vercel, you can create a free account and then what we'll do is create a new project. Now here we'll need to import an existing repository. And in this case, we'll choose the one that we just forked. Now the framework is Next.js, but the root directory we're gonna actually change. Cause if you remember, we have three different starter kits inside of the starter kit slash packages slash blog starter kit slash themes directory. And then we'll need to choose one here. So in this case, I'll just choose hash node. You can choose either one of these. They all work the same with the same credentials. And then I'll continue. And now we have a few environment variables that we need to copy in. So if we go back to the GitHub repository and scroll down, they actually have all the instructions that you can follow through on. So we can go and copy all of these in and we'll need to tweak them a little bit. 
So the cool thing about Vercel here is if we just paste in a .env file, it automatically populates all the individual credentials that we need, which is really, really ni nice. So the first property is the hash node GraphQL endpoint. Now this is the endpoint that you're going to, as you would expect, consume the GraphQL from. We'll actually take a look at the GraphQL editor playground in a minute, but for here, just know that that is gonna stay the exact same. Now the second thing is, and they have notes in here to make sure to change this, the second thing is we need to have our publication host listed. Now these are gonna be at hashnode.dev, and then the way we find the actual prefix here is we need to go into our Hashnode account. Now I've created a separate Hashnode account to work with this demo, so this is not my main account. If you don't have one yet, you'll just go and create one yourself. Now after you have that, you can go into your drop down bar over here and then when it says personal blog and then if you go to blog home this will actually show you that url so on my screen here you can see this is james q quick headless test dot hash node dot dev so i can copy all of this except for the https and then we'll go back to Vercel and paste this in and get rid of that trailing slash now the next public base url you can set this to be at a subpath. in this case we're going to use the root so i'm going to get rid of this variable altogether, and then we'll click deploy now, as this is deploying, I can walk you through a little bit of my blog so far. So I can go into the dashboard, go into articles, and you'll see that I only have one article here so far. So if we come in and edit this, this is all content generated from developer Ipsum, which I just found. So it generated these three different paragraphs, and I don't know how it did it or how it came up with this stuff, but I thought it was kind of entertaining. So you can read through this if you want but I also copied in a cover image and then I have pieces of text in here just for demo purposes. Now, the other thing that's really cool about Hashnode is it has all these other different properties that you can work with as well. So you can have it generate a table of contents. We'll come back to that in a second. You can have uh, customize the slug. You can add tags, custom OG images, SEO metadata, canonical links. So if I was cross posting something from my own blog to here, I could do that and then options for disabling comments and hiding articles from the Hashnode feed. So anyway, there's lots of stuff that's built into this editor and the overall Hashnode experience that I think is really great. And that's why it's so beautiful to take advantage of that while also being able to have full control over the code for our website. So let's go back to Vercel and see if this is finished deploying. So it looks like that has finished and we can actually see a screenshot of this as well. So let's go to our dashboard and then we can open this up with our domain here. This is an auto generated domain for us. And we can open this up and we can see on the home page we now have our list of articles and then we have our cover image as well we have who it's by how much of a time for a read it is and then also the actual content in here now other cool stuff that comes built in with hashnode is you have a comment system where they handle authentication as well and you have share stuff here in addition to this lastly at the bottom you have your tags which i think is pretty neat so all of this stuff is taken care of for us, which is really fabulous. Now, what if you wanted to go and use a different theme? Well, back inside of Vercel, you can go into your project and into your settings, and we can scroll down to the root directory, which in this case has chosen the hash node theme, but we can also switch this to be the enterprise. So we can just manually type it, this in with enterprise, save this, and then now we can go to deployments and redeploy this to make sure that we see something different. So let's go ahead and redeploy that first deploy. And then we should see a brand new looking blog. All right, so it looks like that build has finished and we can now visit this. And we still have the same general idea where we see a list of our blog posts, but now the layout here is a little bit different and the coloring is a little bit different. But again, remember this is stuff that you all have full control over. So what we can do next is we can pull down the actual source code and then see what this looks like and show you how you can make changes to customize this in any way you want. So let's go back to our repository on GitHub. And if we scroll back up to the top, we can find the clone commands. We can copy and paste this. And then I'm going to use the warp terminal. This has been new for me, but I've really been loving it. And I think you will too, if you try it out, let's start with a git clone and then paste in this URL. So this is going to clone that original repository. And then what I want to do is navigate to the package that we're going to be working with and then run an install. So we get all of our packages installed. So let's CD into starter kit packages, blog starter kit themes, and then we'll go into enterprise in this case. Notice the IntelliSense that I got from Warp there, which is really neat. And another thing that's really cool is each of the previous commands now is an individual block. 
So I can go back through individual blocks and kind of see in chunks what was the thing that I was working on or what was the output, for example. Now, the next thing I wanna do is install all of the packages. And since this is a mono repo, it uses PMPM. And I actually didn't know how to install PMPM. I've never used this before myself. So I used the warp AI feature in here to ask it how to install it. Now the answer ended up being relatively easy where I just run an NPM install command of PNPM. But before that, I just had no idea how to do it. So this is kind of cool to be able to ask AI right inside of the terminal without having to go back to the browser. So if you're doing this, you'll have to install PNPM. But from here, I can run an NPM install and this will install all the packages. And actually, as I did that, I still did it wrong. It's PNPM install and that will install all of the packages. And then we'll be able to run this locally and we can explore in the code. So let's do an npm run dev, and this will do a few different things. It's loading GraphQL schemas, it's generating pages, and now this should be available at localhost 3001, and we should see the same experience that we just saw before, if we update our environment variables. So what we'll wanna do, I'm gonna create a new tab inside of here and I'm going to open up this project. So I'm gonna do code command and then dot slash that will open the current directory that I'm in inside of VS Code. So now I've got that open inside of VS Code and we'll need to go into the specific directory, the enterprise directory and add a dot env file. Now, if you want to, you could just come back to Vercel and we can copy these from there. So if we go back into our project and then into settings, and environment variables, we can go and look at each one of these and then copy each one. So let me do that really quickly. All right, so now we've got our environment variables created and this actually reloaded with the new .env. So that means we should be able to try to reload this project. Let's go to localhost 3001 again, and we've got our project up and running. So I wanted to show you a few things inside of the code so that you know where to go to be able to customize this stuff. So inside of the pages directory, if we look inside of the index file, there's a lot of code in here, a lot of stuff that they generated for us, but this is broken down into individual components where if you wanted to customize the header, for example, you could come right in here and grab any of these properties that you want and change any of the Tailwind classes that you want to customize this to look exactly like you like. Now, I'm personally a Tailwind fan. Let me know if you are. So this is my preferred way to do styling anyway. So this works perfectly for me. And this is another reason why I think this starter project makes sense. Now, the other thing I wanna show you though, in addition to it being broken out by components, is if we scroll all the way down to get to the get static props, this is how we're actually able to query, there's a lot of code in here, to actually query all of the blog posts that we want to display on the homepage. So we have a request object here. If we were to scroll all the way up to the imports, you can see this comes from the GraphQL request package. So this is just making a GraphQL request to the GraphQL API. So we get back the data. If there is no publication, we return a not found. And then we convert this into an initial all post array and then include some info about this as well. Now, the thing to know about this is since we're using get static props with Next.js, all this content is only updated statically, which means it's only updated at build time. So if we created a new blog post and then wanted that to show on our site, it wouldn't show up except for this one thing in Next.js. So Next.js has a revalidate function, which will make sure to revalidate this data at a specific increment, which in this case is one second. Now, this is actually pretty interesting inside of Next.js. If we look at Next.js revalidate, the way this works is a little tricky, but basically what it does is it generates static content. And then with that revalidate prop, it says that it's only going to let that content be stale for that number of seconds, for example. Now, the demo they have, they have revalidate for 10 seconds and the starter code that we have, it's every second. And that means if someone goes and looks at the data, at most, that data is going to be 10 seconds old. If they are outside of that 10 second window, it's going to hit a serverless function that requeries that data. And then that will allow it to show up inside of the website with the fresh new content. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's go to our deployed application. You can see we have one article here. Without doing a rebuild, let's go back into the dashboard and create a new article. So let's create a new, so let's just call this test article two, put in some dummy text, and let's just go ahead and publish this. 
So we're missing a lot of data. We didn't do tags. We didn't do an image, but that's okay. We're just doing this for demo purposes. If you're doing this on your real blog, make sure to get rid of it. But this thing is published. And now if we come back to the homepage of our deployed application and refresh, we now see our second article has popped up. Now we didn't have to manually re-trigger a rebuild of our application. It automatically was able to pick up that latest data because of that one little property in Next.js. So the incremental static regeneration or the revalidation flag with Git static props is very powerful when you're building blog content like this. Now I mentioned one other thing I wanted to show you and that is the GraphQL playground. So you can actually come in here and do any type of query that you would like to right inside of this playground and that you can then copy and paste into your code. So it's really nice to know that this exists because you can test out your queries, make sure they look right and then take them into your code and be able to use them there. They even have full documentation on all the things that you could work with. So they have all that documented for you to do queries, mutations, and then all the different schema types that you could work with. So this is really, really powerful feature, especially if you're using the API for the first time, you have all the documentation that you need. So in just a couple of minutes, we're able to fork a repository, deploy that to Vercel, add some environment variables, and now we have a full workflow of being able to write articles. And then because of validation with static props inside of Next.js, we now have that content showing anytime we make updates within a few seconds, which is really, really cool. So I mentioned there were a couple of like lesser known features in the hash node that I think are worth calling out. So I wanted to do that in the last couple of minutes here. Now, one is the GitHub integration where you can do two things with GitHub. You can publish content from GitHub. So if you push markdown files to GitHub, you can publish from there and or you can back up your code or your blog post to GitHub. Now, this is a super, super useful feature. That way, if some, somehow Hashnode goes away, you still have a copy of all of your content and you own it. So you'll never lose that content unless GitHub goes away, which is not likely, but you have that in a source repository that you can track it anytime you want. Next thing that I think is really interesting, and I kind of glossed over this earlier, is they have a newsletter set up in here as well. So this is something I recommend for anybody building a brand building blog posts, et cetera, is if you want to do that, a newsletter is definitely one of your bigger options. So in this case, you don't have to do any additional setup. This is all taken care of for you and you can manage that through Hashnode, which I think is pretty cool. Now, lastly, I want to mention webhooks. Let's say you wanted to call some sort of code that you have running somewhere every time you create an article, update an article, etc. Well, you can do this with webhooks by adding the address of where you want to call, basically the address to an API endpoint that you have hosted somewhere. You can determine which one of these trigger events should call your webhook, and then you can pass a secret to make sure this is secure and confirm that this is coming only from Hashnode. Webhooks enable so much functionality that you can do anything you want by handling these webhooks in your own code if you need to. So there's tons of flexibility with Hashnode. Again, this has been my favorite editing experience and the overall just getting started for developers or if you're building a team with a blog, Hashnode has always been the way to go. And now with headless Hashnode, you can do this with your own code using whatever tech stack you want and deploy this anywhere you want as well. In this case, we use the Next.js starter template from Hashnode, which gave us everything we needed and then deployed that Vercel to Vercel because it's super, super quick and easy to do so. Let me know if you plan to use headless mode in Hashnode in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.